let's okay my friends let's continue now so um so okay so prophet muhammad is first raised by his uncle abdul mutallib and then when abdul mutallib by his grandfather abdul mutallib and then when his grandfather dies by his uncle abu talib right um so here um you say you have to say by grandfather Abdul Muttalib and then by uncle Abu Talib right my friends right so um so he ra he he's raised to be a very sort of um decent human being tradition has it and he he becomes very very uh, trustworthy and for his um un he he used to go with his uncle um to on on trade excur excursions from mecca now you know you have mecca in the in your mind's eye from mecca to syria now you you know your geography right and um and gradually he he grows up and um because of his um reputation as being al amin right trustworthy a wealthy merchant uh, of mecca by the name of khadija actually asks for the hand of prophet muhammad right so here you have a woman who is asking for the hand of a man and you have to keep in mind that we are talking about a society that originally excuse me was originally was um, was built on a matri matri linear basis right matri lineal basis and 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 that um, later became a patri pa patriarchal society right so this the 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 power of of um women in still the power of women in meccan societies is reflected in the in 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 the fact that the prophet's wife actually asks the hand of the marriage of the prophet now we are have a tradition has it that by the time prophet is born this has become a very patriarchal society um women are not counted as much uh, women are um um you know uh, some some young children or uh, young young uh, baby girls are actually um killed and 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 so on and so forth and you know the, the depiction that we have of meccan society during the jahiliya what the tradition calls jahiliya or era of ignorance right the depiction that we have of jahiliya and era, era of ignorance from the point of view of islamic narrative of origins is a very very sort of um uh, dark um is is the the depiction of a very dark society right and a, a society where class dif differences have become paramount where the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer there are no uh, no mechanisms to take care of the poor there are um you know there are all these um oppressive um, sort of measures against women and so on and so forth and in this kind of society which is basically has become so called a quote unquote capitalist society right in the meccan context of it of course right um uh, the prophet is raised and 
tradition has it that all the inequities that he has he sees around himself in in Mecca it be, um, you know it may has made him very very concerned about the the ways in which his society is developing so now here you have the a prophet uh, you know a a, a, a tradesman, a lesser tradesman, if you will, who is tr going back and forth to Syria, right, and say this is like from his, from his, from 590s onward, right, from his 20s onward, right, he is now, um, say, uh, leading caravans for, uh, for um, his wife Khadija, right, from his for his wife Khadija to go to where to Syria, right? And we're going to get to that also. So so what happens is that um, uh, during his um, you know during his life during this time, um, Prophet Muhammad um, liked to meditate, right? So he would go up to a. Um, a cave, the cave is called near Mecca, right? A cave that is called Mount Hira. And Hira is written the way um, basically that you pronounce it H I R A. He would go to a cave in Mount. I'm sorry. Mount Hira uh, in order to meditate. In one of these uh, stays at uh, Mount Hira, the tradition has it that the angel Gabriel appears to Prophet Muhammad and um, asks him, tells him that he is now, a, um, tells him that he is now a um, a prophet and that uh, and that um, and that he should he should start by reading the first um, surah of the uh, of the uh, that 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 it, the first surah that is sort of revealed to him and that is iqra recite Recite in the name of thy Lord who created you from a blood clot, right? Iqra bi isma labbaka al-lazi al-lazi khalaqa min al-alaq, right? So, min um, al-alaq, right? So, um, so Prophet Muhammad starts, um, starts um, sort of... Uh, you know, at, at the time that he gets the revelation, um, tradition has it that, you know, he, he, he thinks he's mad. In fact, some, some people claim him to be mad when he begins little by little by proselytizing, right? And, um, and one of the things, the other things that you have to keep in mind is that Mecca at this time was a shrine, right? Was a shrine, was a, a pagan shrine in which the tradition has it around 360 idols were, um, were, uh, were put and, and at certain times of the month, right? Every tribe who had an idol, uh, in in this uh, in this cubic uh, cubic sort of structure, which is called the Kaaba, which is uh, which is literally means the cubic skull, um, the cubic a uh, cubic uh, structure, and there are three hundred and sixty idols belonging to different tribes to it and in certain times of the month right there is there is supposed to be no fighting between the tribes right um and you saw that there are multitudes of tribes in arabian peninsula and they would all come to um to shrines and these you can find these shrines all over um, Arabia basically and on southern Arabia also which you know here 
we don't see it on the map, right? You could find these shrines all over Arabia, like little structures, usually no more than, you know, having a few stones and having some, um, some, uh, you know, some elements that represent uh, um, gods, uh, including idols and whatnot, uh, scattered during different places on the Arabian Peninsula where people would stay, you know, on their travels to and fro in, as, as merchants, where people would stay and, and, um, and exchange, um, you know, trade, minor trading perhaps, and then, uh, and then, um, pray and, you know, um, and, it, it is sacred territory. So Mecca was was one such sacred territory, right? It was a territory, and you see it is located here on the map, on very close to the Red Sea, right? Um, but as you can see here, they're all mountains here, right? And these mountains are are literally barriers, and in Arabic, these barriers are called Hejaz. So this is a, a, a region called Hejaz to this day in, in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, which is now called the Saudi Arabia, right? Saudi Arabia. So, um, so he starts, um, so uh, Prophet Muhammad is, you know, part of this uh, uh, and, and the Quraysh in general are in charge of um, Kaaba, are in charge of Mecca, which has become one of the important shrines on the way, on the north-south um, sort of trade route, right? Uh, from Yemen, right, to Syria, right? And you see here, my friends, you see here the Qasanids, right? The satellites of the of the Byzantines that we talked about. The fact that the Prophet Muhammad was known as a, um, as a, uh, you know, um, as an Al Amin, as a trustworthy person. Tradition has it was such that you know at some point the tribes wanted to put the uh, the black and uh, the sacred black stone onto the. Uh, onto uh, the Kaaba, and the tribes were in, you know, were were fighting over who can do this and who should do this and who has the uh, high, who should be given this highest honor, and uh, they didn't know what to do, and they came and they come across Prophet Muhammad, and he says, oh well, it's very simple. You put the stone in the middle of a. Uh, piece of cloth and each member of each tribe um, or each clan will take a part of, uh, uh, you know, a part of this, um, this cloth and together you will carry it into the, um, into the Kaaba and you will install it in the Kaaba. So, um, so, so this is the situation at, um, of, 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 and Prophet Muhammad, um, you know, while he has grown up. So what? When happens? What? When, when? When does the first? When does the? When does uh, revelation come down to uh, Prophet Muhammad? When does his uh, sort of uh, prophetic mission, right, uh, start? That is when he is 60, 6, uh, 40 years old. Right from five seventy to six ten, he is forty years old, and he goes to Mount Tira, and he um he 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 uh, he receives the first uh, the first uh, sort of revelation. Uh, Recite in the name of thy Lord who has created created man from a blood clot. Right. So, um, so okay. So the Prophet Muhammad by this time, of course, is m married to Khadija, right? And his uncle, 
his uncle Abu Talib, who has been raising him after his grandfather's death, right, has a son called Ali. Therefore, Ali becomes the cousin of Prophet Muhammad, right? Ali is the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, right? And Okay, so um, Ali, excuse me, <laughs> you guys, yes, this is, I'm trying to make this small, okay, here we go, okay, so, um, so Prophet Muhammad begins proselytizing and tradition has it that Khadija, everybody, agrees that Khadija was the first, but over who was the second, tradition diverges, right? A, a group of um, uh, traditionists, and we will get to who they are, right, um, said that Ali was the second person to, to, uh, to convert, a separate group called Omar that as the second person to convert. Um, the gradually the after beginning to proselytize in in you know in secret, um, gradually the the uh, community of small community of Muslims and this is according to tradition, right? A small community of Muslims grows and 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 and. And mostly the people who are being attracted to the Prophet Muhammad are the have-nones of the Meccan society, right? Are, are the poorer sections of the Meccan society. And once their numbers grow to a, a, a little bit, right, um, they, they begin, the Meccans begin to, to harass this small community of Muslims. So while in Mecca, so then, you know, once they become, they start becoming, um, being harassed, like very shortly the, uh, thereafter, by 615, right, they, the small community decides that, um, that, you know, they, they have to uh, migrate from Mecca because they are being harassed uh, by the Meccans. So a first migration, meaning hijra, literally in Arabic, right, migration, mi meaning hijra, takes place by a small community of this small community of Muslims where they go to Ethiopia. And there is a good reason where they go, why they go to e Ethiopia, because um, there are, you know, uh, Arabia and specifically Yemen, right, uh, have relations with Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Yemen having been in um, uh, sort of uh, in loggerheads and fighting with each other with each other uh, for centuries. Uh, Ethiopia is a, um, is a monophysite community. In other words, is a sectarian community of Christians, while the while the uh, Byzantines themselves are Diophysites, right? Um, believe, right? We, we talked about this, right? So, what? Although the the Aksumite, the Ethiopians, are uh, from a uh, from a uh, from a different Christian sect, so, so to speak. Um, nevertheless, they are satellites for the Byzantines. However, in spite of all of this, when the um, the uh, small community of Muslims go go to Christian uh, Ethiopia. They are they're treated fine, and some of them stay there, and some of them nevertheless come back to Mecca. The conditions for this is not very clear in 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 the traditions, and um, and and so here we are. So so the Meccan community after going to. Ethiopia, after uh, taking the first hijra to e Ethiopia, decides that, okay, this, uh, after a few more years, decides that, 
okay, this is really not working. So the tradition has it that from Medina, there were, um, you know, which is an oasis, which is, and as we talked about it, an agricultural oasis, um, in Medina, the tradition again has it that uh, a group of people who are fighting amongst themselves in Medina come and ask the Prophet and, um, and they, they have, of course have heard that uh, the tr of the trustworthiness of the Prophet Muhammad, right? And they send a delegation to Mecca to ask the Prophet and his, um, and his small community to immigrate right to um to medina so this becomes the major major watershed of this small um islamic community right small muslim community um who is you know no prophet is uh, is accepted in their uh in their own homes right so uh, in uh 622 the prophet and his community go from mecca to medina and this in retrospect for later muslim communities becomes the year one of hijra immigration of the community and becomes the year one of the Muslim calendar, right? Sort of equivalent to 622, except that 622 is a solar, based on a solar calendar and uh, the traditional Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar, goes by moons, so it is not a direct equivalent uh, equivalence that we have here but um you know all you, you know you have to calculate it in order to get to 622 okay so the first coming the first um uh, the first um sort of immigration takes place by the prophet muhammad and uh, and um his community right um so in the in the uh, uh, after um, Prophet Muhammad settles himself in the Medina, his community and himself to in the Medina um, society, they themselves, the community that has gone there, becomes known as those who have immigrated, Muhajirun. Right, the immigrants Mahajarun, which comes from the same uh, three roots Hajara, right? All Semitic uh, languages, as we now know, ha come from a three stem root, right? He and he, in this case, is H, J, and R. And, and this is then uh, sort of uh, conjugated and uh, made into adverbs and adjectives and, um, you know, um, all kinds of different, uh, um, different nouns and whatnot, right? So immigrants versus, immigrants versus ansar, which basically means helpers. Right, so in in this community, they 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 uh, uh, the Muslims settle themselves and they begin to um, uh, begin to grow and they begin to um, to to um, sort of establish connections with the Ansar and uh, originally everything is um, fine and. Um, you know, so to speak, hunky dory, right? Um, but gradually, um, gradually, uh, uh, sort of uh, divisions start to grow. Now, um, the Islamic tradition uh, uh, sort of 
tells the story in a different way. Well, it, not not that it tells the story in a different way, but in Mec in Medina we have the the issue of what happens between the Jewish, um, because Medina is a Jewish city by now, right? And Medina is a city that is in touch, right? Medina trades with Hira, right? The Lachmit capital, if you remember, right? And Medina is, like Mecca, a trading center, right? And, uh, and, um, and the, the, it is pro predominantly um, populated by, um, by Jewish um, uh, populations, and it is these um, Jewish populations that come and ask for the hand of the Prophet Muhammad. I mean, to, for for the for the coming of the Prophet Muhammad to um, to Medina, uh, but then um, you know you're talking about commerce and you're talking about rivalries. In fact, Pro Prophet Muhammad, when he goes to Medina, he his community goes and settles in the midst of the markets of uh, Medina, of the Jewish markets of Medina, and um, well, gradually. Um, uh, gradually, um, you know, oppositions occurs and and um, competition over over resources and and whatnot. And we are told that uh, Prophet Muhammad um, sort of uh, at first gives uh, gives a, a sort of warning uh, to uh, certain Jewish populations of Medina. That you know, uh, they were supposed to be. You were supposed to be the helpers, not competitors. Something to that effect, right? And then, uh, and when that does not work, uh, and the tradition has it that the Jewish population actually um, uh, mutinies, so to speak, against the uh, the small Muslim community, and then, and uh, therefore the. Um, they they are massacred uh, at the hand of Prophet Muhammad and his uh, community and th and thrown out. Now, one of the things that I have to tell you already at the outset, my friends, is that all of what I have told you up to now is according to the traditions of the Prophet, according to the Muslim tradition of the rise of Islam, Muslim narrative of origins. Now there are all kinds of questions and issues that have risen in this context of the narrative of Islamic origins. First of all, you know, Prophet Muhammad is, um, you know, he uh, okay, let me continue his uh, his um, his saga, and then we we'll, we we'll, I talk about the uh, problems that we have. So the Prophet Muhammad is supposed to you know after this uh, um, uh, sort of um, contacts with the Jewish community, according to tradition, again. Um, they, they, the, the, the Meccans realize that um, that Medina is is uh, is um, sort of um, uh, reputation of the Prophet is uh, sort of enhanced by his immigration to Medina and um, and and Medina of course is on the way to Syria, the Meccan trade to Syria, and, and, and therefore uh, we are told that three wars take, take place um, between um, six twenty four and six twenty seven. Right, three wars take place between the Meccans and Medinans, and the uh, and the and the Prophet and his uh, his entourage are finally victorious in these wars, and what happens is that um, once they are victorious, um, the the reputation of the Prophet Muhammad raises 
rises even higher, right? And various tribes come to Prophet Muhammad to Medina to give their oath of allegiance. To the Prophet Muhammad, right? And um, ostensibly various tribes join the, pro the camp of Prophet Muhammad and become Muslims in um, uh, quote-unquote, right? Become Muslims, quote-unquote. So, um, so, um, okay, um, so, so the, the Muslims in Arabia, so to speak, grow, and by the time that uh, Prophet is victorious in 628, he goes back from Medina to Mecca peacefully. The Meccans accept him peacefully, and he goes, tradition has it, that he goes into, he, he and his supporters uh, go into the um, Kaaba in Mecca and destroy the idols of, 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 of uh, Kaaba and proclaim the Kaaba as the house of God, as the house of Allah. Now, Allah is simply being a Semitic word, right, my friends? Um, Allah, like Hebrew, right, um, is, um, is simply this. What is it? Allah, the name for a single God, a small God, in Arabic is Ilaha, right? Just like in Hebrew is Elohim, right? Uh, because they're both very close, they're both Semitic languages, they're in fact sister languages, right? So the way you make a, a Arabic noun definite is by putting next to it an Al. So, so therefore, you the, if you want to say the God becomes Al Ilaha, but, you know, Al-Ilaha is sort of hard to pronounce, so you connect them together, and that becomes Allah, right? Meaning the God is simply the Arabic term for the God, right? Because what develops in, in, in the Muslim community uh, later on um, is actually a, a, is supposed to be a, a strict monotheism where Allah becomes an all-hearing, all-seeing, that means omniscient, I'm sorry, omniscient, Oh, I'm sorry. Here it we go. The correct spelling. Um, ne shant. I have to double check that, my friends. Okay, omniscient, uh, omniscient, um, meaning knowing everything, all knowing God, right? Uh, omniscient uh, and omnipresent right, always present God, right, uh, of course, um, in uh, various sectarian Islamic traditions, um, right, they, you, you begin to develop various in interceders between Allah and the believer, right, uh, uh, which, um, uh, which, although the Muslims do not have a church, right uh, i mean they have mosques but they do not have a church and they the their clergy it are are not really um and they and they uh, you know there is no such things as priest in the islamic tradition right but we will see that in the shiite tradition and various other sectarian groups in islam um, there develops this interceding uh, 
sort of uh, sort of uh, figures that in Shiite Islam, right, it's called Imam, are called Imams, and we will get to that later. So anyway, so um, um, so yes, so af uh, in in um, six twenty eight. The Prophet Muhammad goes to back to Mecca and, so to speak, conquers, quote-unquote, conquers Mecca, and, and the Meccans accept him. The Meccans uh, sort of accept Islam, so to speak, we are told, according to the tradition, right? And, uh, um, you know, this is after the three wars that takes place between 624 to 627, Right and six twenty eight is um, is sort of you know uh, everybody comes together and ostensibly the Muslim community really really glows and until in uh, six thirty two yeah um, the Prophet Muhammad uh, sort of dies right uh, and um, and then. Uh, a, a problem arises in the is early Islamic community, early Muslim community, because the seal of the prophets is now gone, right? So the question now becomes, does he have a successor? Should he have a successor? If he's the seal of the prophets, the, the, you know, then he cannot have a su successor as a prophet, right? So what, what should come after him? Someone who just um, comes after him, i.e. someone who is a caliph, For those of you who are interested to know, which comes from khalafa, meaning to come after, simply, to come after, with no uh, sort of judgment attached to it. So the caliph is someone who comes after the Prophet Muhammad, and as uh, as the um, and and overtakes uh, the political, so to speak. Office of the Prophet Muhammad. So the caliphs, right? Um, the caliphs of subsequent uh, Muslim communities, right? Um, they are, uh, they are, uh, you know, they 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 have to be paid uh, um, an oath of allegiance to and um, and and be respected and and uh, you know they're the leaders of the community, but. They are not divine, right? They are not divine, at least up to now, right? They are not considered divine, right, at this moment, right? So, so what happens, right? So they, um, the, um, the, so the family of the prophet, right, um, um, Muhammad, his um, um, uncle Abu Talib, who's by now passed away, and the, his uncle's son Ali, Ali, right? They all argue, right, that succession should go to Ali. who is not only the cousin of the prophet, but becomes the son-in-law of the prophet, right? Because he marries, uh, Ali marries the daughter of the prophet from Khadija, uh, which um, Ali marries um, Fatima, the daughter of the prophet, right, uh, from which you get the sons of Ali and Fatima, Hassan and Hussein. Okay, these figures you have to know, my friends, right? Ali, Fatima, Khadija, Muhammad, of course, Prophet Muhammad, right, Hassan and Hussein. Right, you have to know this. These are very important figures, right? So, okay, in early Islamic history. So, what happens then 
So Ali, the family of the Prophet, says, okay, Ali is both the son-in-law and the cousin of the Prophet. He, of course, has the right of succession. Um, the community does not accept, right? We are told by tradition and the fir one of the ostensibly first other com converts, i.e. Abu Bakr, um, um, becomes becomes the first caliph, right? The first caliph after Prophet Muhammad, and he is part of a four figures that we will go into right now, who are called the rightly guided caliphs. For those of you who want to know, the Ra Shedun, meaning rightly guided uh, caliphs. And who are these? These are Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman, then comes Osman, who is, okay, let's go here. Bear with me, my friends, right? Yeah. Osman, who is coming from Abdul Shams clan, right? Abdul Shams clan, a clan that was uh, that was against the Prophet to begin uh, originally, right? From the Omayya, uh, the, the Omayya clan, right? And so after after uh, uh, Omar. Uh, as far as the family of the Prophet is concerned, um, the community adds uh, um, insult to injury, right? And 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 uh, and Usman, um, who is an Umayyad, right, uh, and a cousin of a very important figure that we will uh, learn about um, shortly hereafter. Um, uh, Osman becomes uh, an, a, a caliph from the Umayyads, right? Um, so now it's very easy to to remember how much they 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 uh, how much each ruled. Abu Bakr rules for two years, six thirty two to six thirty four. Omar re rules for ten years, six thirty four to six forty four. Osman rules for 12 years, 2 and 10 put together, 12 years, and then Osman is killed, right? Uh, Osman is killed by, um, by, um, well, doesn't matter by, by whom, um, Osman is killed, and, uh, you know, this is the first um, sort of, atrocity that happens in the Muslim community community where a caliph is is murdered right uh, but nevertheless uh, Ali the son-in-law and the prophet um, prophet's son-in-law and cousin um, takes um, takes over uh, the caliphate um, and he rules for five years, but two things happen um, during the uh, the rules of the rightly guided caliphs. Right, uh, first is that there is a wave of conquest, and second is that uh, the first civil war or the first um, um, fitna is developed between who between Ali and uh, the cousin and son-in-law of the Prophet and Muawiyah and um, the cousin of Usman, right? So the first civil war uh, 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 takes place in the Islamic community at the end of, I mean, through the rule of um, Ali, right? So I'm going to stop here, my friends and uh, continue the rest of our uh, lecture in a 
in the next um, uh, video for you. Uh, I bid you farewell. I hope you liked and learned from this uh, lecture and uh, I'll uh, see you in a little while. Well, I, yeah, okay. Uh, take care, my friends.